One advantage of using a wireless network over a wired network is obviously the fact that I can easily move around and at the same time stay connected to the network. But what if we have two or more access points? I guess that's when it gets a little bit tricky, right? Because now that client needs to be able to seamlessly roam between the access points. Otherwise, it might lose its connection in the process. And as a result, there might be interruption in whatever network service it is using. For example, uh, let's say I'm on a conference call and I just need to quickly run to the bathroom, which is on the other side. If there is no seamless roaming, then they might not even be able to hear me when I'm there which I guess is not necessarily a bad thing. I'm sorry, it was a bad example, but I hope you got the idea. The bottom line is seamless roaming is very important in the networks that consists of two or more wireless access points. And that's why in this video, we're gonna talk about six important points that we should pay attention to if you wanna experience seamless roaming. Number one, the access points should not be too close or too far from each other. Because if they're too close, then as you can see in this example, even though this client is now closer to the AP2, it is still connected to the AP1. This is mainly because it is still receiving a rather acceptable signal from the AP1, and it doesn't feel the need to switch to a different access point, even though obviously this one has a stronger signal. This is called a sticky client issue. Now, if they're too far from each other, then we're gonna have a roaming dead zone here, which is not good because the client will lose its connection when it gets here. And that's why it is recommended to make sure there is 15 to 20% overlap between the wireless networks, which should work best for the seamless roaming. Number two, in the previous example, we assumed the access points were single band, but nowadays they're dual band or even tri band. For example, a Wi Fi 6E access point can have a 2.4 gigahertz, 5 gigahertz, and a 6 gigahertz band. Let's say the access points are now dual band. They have a 2.4 gigahertz band and a 5 gigahertz band. The higher frequency has a shorter range. For example, if this is the range of the 2.4 GHz band, then the range of the 5 GHz band would be something like this. Although in this example, the 5 GHz wireless networks have a 15 to 20 percent overlap, which seems to be perfect for the seamless roaming, the 2.4 GHz wireless networks are nothing like that, and a sticky client issue is very much likely to happen here. So in this situation, adjusting the transmit power could be helpful. For example, here if we reduce the transmit power for the 2.4 GHz band, it could actually fix the problem. So adjusting the transmit power is one way to change the size of the coverage area for each frequency band. And in that example, reducing it for the 2.4 GHz band seemed to be helpful. But just keep in mind, this is not something you would want to randomly change. And there should be a good reason for doing that. Because otherwise, it might even make things worse. Besides, you don't want to exceed the maximum transmit power allowed in your country, because that's going to put you in trouble. Number three, the number of access points I use in my network. And the number of wireless networks each of them is broadcasting is important too. Well obviously if there aren't enough access points there might be places with no Wi-Fi which is not good but if there are too many access points it's not necessarily good either because if there are too many access points heard by a client it might actually result in a weird situation in which the client would constantly switch back and forth between the access points which is obviously far from seamless roaming and not to mention that in such a situation it is more likely that my own wireless networks would interfere with each other which is something I really want to avoid. So the bottom line is the number of access points we use in the network, their location, their distance from each other, what radio frequency they are broadcasting on, what is the transmit power. These are the things that can tremendously affect the quality of the roaming. And interestingly enough, they're all part of the network design. So I guess it is safe to say that if there is a good network design, then there is a good chance that we're going to have seamless roaming. As simple as that. Now, some people might think that network and wireless network design is only for sophisticated networks, maybe a company with hundreds of users. And we don't need to plan and design our simple home network. We can have a wireless router here, maybe a couple of mesh nodes there, and it should work fine. 
Well, it might, but at the same time, it might not. That network can actually run into many issues in the future, and bad roaming is only one of them. The good news is network design for home networks is usually not that complicated of a job, but it can prevent many issues from happening in the future and save us so much troubleshooting time. In fact, uh, like this video if you want me to put together a video on home network design. Tell you what, if this video gets 500 likes, I'll do that. Number 4. There are some IEEE 802.11 standards that if they're utilized in the network, they could improve the overall roaming situation, each one from kind of a different angle though. For example, here the access point would provide some information about the neighboring access points and their channels and send this information to the connected client, which can help it to determine faster which one is the next AP it should connect to and how. This one can allow the encryption keys that are used for the security and authentication to be stored on all the access points within the network. This should reduce the latency and the time required for the client to be authenticated every time it roams to a new access point. Here the access point would let the connected client know if there is a less busy access point available. So this way the client can roam to that one. This not only can improve the roaming, but also can improve the load balancing as well. But they would only work if both the access points and the client support them. Otherwise they wouldn't have any positive effects on the roaming. Number 5. Now, sometimes the network design and everything is good, but we might still have some roaming issues here and there. It is worth noting that after all, it is the client's device, not the access point that decides whether it should roam between the access points or not. So if there is maybe one device that just doesn't seem to want to roam in the right place and at the right time, we might be able to fix that by changing its roaming sensitivity, which is also called roaming aggressiveness. For example, in Windows, this is where I can find it. By default it is set to medium, but if my goal is to make the client to start the roaming process when its current signal is still strong, then I should set it to a higher value. Or if the goal is to make the client to start the roaming process when its current signal is very weak, then obviously I should set it to something lower. Number 6. Some wireless routers or access points might have a feature that even though it's not an industry standard, it can help the clients to make better and faster roaming decisions. For example, the ASUS wireless routers have a feature called Roaming Assistant, and if I enable it then wireless router will try to disconnect any clients whose signal strength is less than the number I enter here. So in other words, this should somehow force those clients to find a better access point when their signal strength is weaker than this number. I personally have used this in my ASUS AI Mesh system before and talked about it in that video when I was testing the ASUS AI Mesh system. So Definitely check it out if you are interested to know more details. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you liked it. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Share it if you think others might like it too. And subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this. Thank you again and I will see you next time.